Hello, my name is Erin Jones and today I will be presenting the progress that our team has made um, with the project that VTEPS has assigned to us, which is to develop a product that college students would need or use both on and off campus. Um, and to begin, we'll do a simple overview of what this presentation will be going over. So our product is called Simple Feed, and it is an automatic multi-purpose dispenser. And I'll be going more into what it does later on in this presentation. Um, our team began with concept generation to try to develop some ideas for this project. Um, we then developed a customer profile and use case to help us later on when we're designing um, and developing the product. Um, our team created a Gantt chart to help us stay on time with our tasks. Um, the team then conducted interviews to identify customer needs and to um, develop these customer needs into target specifications. And then we completed this part of the project with um, competitive benchmarking and economic analysis to determine the product's financial viability. So to begin, the team sat down and started generating some different concepts um, and ideas for our product. We did this by discussing our personal interests and hobbies, our likes and dislikes, um, dissatisfaction with different products, and then we moved on to college students in general's trends on campus, their likes and dislikes. And what we came up with were five initial ideas. Um, we had an automatic pasta stirrer, an automatic fish feeder, an automatic plant waterer, um, an automatic frisbee thrower, and then an alarm clock to help students wake up easier. And so after identifying these five um, initial ideas, we narrowed it down to three ideas that we would like to further develop. And these were the automatic pasta stir, the alarm clock that makes waking up easier. And then we wanted to look into a combination of the automatic fish feeder and the automatic plant waterer. And so after conducting an RWW analysis on these three ideas that we further developed, um, we decided that the combination of the fish feeder and plant waterer was probably um, our best option um, and it had the greatest potential. Um, so what this is, is we have a product that will dispense different materials based on the customer's need. Um, they can put input a time interval for how often they would like the material to be dispensed. It could be used for watering small plants or feeding small pets or animals or anything else that the customer really needs. And we decided that this was a good product to pursue because college students are very busy and often they're forgetful. So they can often neglect their plants or small animals. Um, students also go home for breaks or for holidays often, and students that are living farther away are not able to transport these plants or small animals back home with them, so this feeder would help them over these breaks. And then it's also adaptable to the individual needs of the customer, and our product does have a customer focus to it. That is our competitive strategy, and so the product overall seemed like a good one to pursue. And so next, the team worked on developing a customer profile. Um, this is kind of the embodiment of the typical student that we would be selling to in the target market. And so for our customer profile, our customer is Johnny Calypso. He's a busy, on-the-go type of student who enjoys spending time outside, whether it be hiking or playing sports on the drill field with his friends. Um, he's very responsible with his money, but he is looking for a good investment, just like all college students would. Um, and so these are some of the key attributes to keep in mind when we are further developing our product. So then um, our team came up with the use case and this was an overall generalization of the basic flow of what our product is supposed to do. Um, the alternative, alternate flows of what could possibly go wrong when our customer is using the product. And then the post conditions or what we ultimately want the product to do. And so for the basic flow, the customer will decide what kind of material they would like to dispense. Um, they'll need to input the two times, one that represents the time the contents are dispensed, and then the other will be the time between supplies. Um, and then if all goes well, the stationary disc will rotate, and then it will dispense the material. The alternate flows would be if the customers inputted a time that was um, too large or too small, so that that would be dispensing materials either too frequently or not frequent enough, which when you're dealing with living objects, animals, plants, that can be pretty detrimental if you have too much or too little of the material. And then the post conditions would be that the product will cycle through all of the materials and it will supply enough of the, the materials to um, these plants or these animals or anything else that the customer really needs. 
Um, next, we worked to develop a Gantt chart, and this was to help keep our team on um, task, uh, on time with the tasks that we need to accomplish. And so, so far, we have completed the ident identification of customer needs and the establishment of target specifications. The rest, rest of the tasks that are highlighted in red is the critical path for the rest of our project. Um, these are the tasks that will take the longest, and so if any of those run over schedule, it will end up delaying the completion of the entire project. Um, two of the tasks that we need to keep in mind that could present possible problems in the future will be the design for manufacturing and the prototyping tasks, because both of those have a larger potential to take longer or more errors could occur in those, so that's something that we will be keeping in mind as we move forward. So next, um, our team went out and we identified potential customers that would be purchasing or using our product and we conducted customer interviews to get statements about our product and what these customers liked about it, didn't like about it, would like to see further and further development. And so we were able to take these customer statements, this raw data, and translate them into interpreted needs of our product. And so some of these um, with the P representing primary needs and the S representing secondary would be the time between refills, the dispensing rate, um, that the dispensing rate can be changed, um, that it's not just a set rate, and that the product is self-sufficient so that once they do put the material in, it can just roll on its own until it needs to be refilled again. So we were able to take these identified customer needs and with this chart, we translated these needs into target specifications to allow these needs to be measurable um, with actual values or Boolean variables or such. And so with the customer needs, we were able to rank the importance of them based off of the feedback that we got from our customers in our interviews. So the time between refills and knowing that the product is self-sufficient were the most important needs of the customers that we gathered. And so um, we were able to translate these needs into measurable values um, and what ended up being was the time of self-sufficiency um, ended up correlating with a lot of these customer needs and so that is going to be the most important um, specification to focus on when developing our product um, because that is what seems to hit on most of the customer needs that we found um, within the target specifications. And so next, um, our team decided to do a competitive benchmark. Um, so we went out and found a product that was similar to ours. Um, we found one that was for an automatic plant waterer that had really great reviews on it. And that was priced at $69.99. So we decided that we would price the Simple Feed product at $60. We estimate that the manufacturing cost for our product will be $36.50. That includes the Arduino microcontrollers and then the rest of the parts to assemble our product. And so here we were able to make a graph that breaks down the fixed cost, which was $10,000. That is what VTEPS has told us the fixed cost will be for this project. Um, the total cost you can see is represented by the blue line, and then the total revenue is represented by the orange line. And where these two lines intersect is our break-even point. And what that means is that we need to be able to sell 426 of our units of our product and able to break even so that we are not under, not over. Um, and then the area in between these two lines is where we would have our profit later on. Um, and we, after doing this analysis, decided that um, being able to sell 426 units was within reason. And so um, we would probably surpass that and be able to make a profit off of the product. And so our product idea is economically viable. And so to conclude this presentation, um, the team was able to sit down, go through the concept generation. We narrowed it down through our WW analysis to our specific product. Um, we were able to establish the timeline that ensures efficient product design and manufacturing um, so that we can keep track of what tasks are coming up or see which tasks we're falling behind on. Um, we were able to, through the customer um, interviews, produce customer needs and in turn turn those into target specifications. Um, which is very important to keep in mind um, for further development. And then through the economic analysis and competitive benchmarking, we were able to determine that our product is economically viable. Thank you so much for listening.